Yeah, uh, that's kind of just a new concept that actually George just reminded me of, of, of kind of tapping into uh, existing uh, things. Like, for instance, October is Hunger Month in Rhode Island, yeah. uh, in America. And then we have certain things in Rhode Island that are food-based events that we can tap into and kind of keep that theme going, you know, and always connecting the theme between music and ending hunger. So anytime there's an event, we do try to tie in musicians and artists and also tie in a food drive. So it's a lot of existing things to be tapping into out there. Okay. Which, which brings up an interesting question for me. Have, uh, have you noticed or have you seen that the artistic and mostly the, the musicians seem to be a lot more charitable with their time and talent than uh, you'd say uh, business owners per se? Well, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know if it's more or less, but wh wherever musicians tend to gather is really where the heart of the community is. You know, you get a lot of musicians, you get a lot of, and then the other flip side of that is their fans. Mm -hmm. So let's not forget the fan aspect right. of this, you know, and it's really one of the reasons why we're so, so excited about this concept is it's so grassroots. You get all these musicians out there, and the thing is that they have a lot of influence over society. So getting back to what you were saying is the musicians are influential and then their fans take action and they're the ones who are bringing the food to the food drive. So you really have that very deep aspect to it. Okay. Here's a challenge that I'd like to put out to um, <clears throat> all of our promoter friends, the bands that we've all come in contact with and all the clubs uh, and venues that are in Providence. Is uh, My challenge and our challenge would be for them is to start – to try to um, gather canned foods. I can't believe you're saying that. Here's some news for you. <laughs> news flash. This is one of the first announcements of this, too, is we've recently, in keeping with making that connection between music and hunger, I've recently hooked up with the Outreach Committee for the Rhode Island uh, Music Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. They're actually launching a new, initiative, a new initiative called Hunger Down, and this is going to be to get the venues to have ongoing food drives at their events. So whereas the 152 Hunger Network will be more focused on the musicians and artists taking the actions, this will be more focused on getting the venues to have ongoing food drives. Uh, but what I see, though, that's it's an awesome idea, but the venues really don't promote like they should. And it's no. basically up to the promoter and the bands to do the promotion of their shows. Yeah, hopefully we can change some of so, that. <laughs> yeah, right. But hopefully we can get our promoter friends and our band friends and those venues to, you know, uh, some of our promoter friends do maybe four shows a month. Mm. And they could be at different venues and yeah, all, all, like obviously it. in different genres. Is to start putting uh, on their flyers to promote the show to start bringing a canned food. You know, maybe we can – get together and uh if they come back to us and say hey i'll do a, a food drive next friday night for this punk show you have, you have maybe no you idea. and i can take a ride around and collect the food and just pop in there and see what's going on you have no idea how perfect that is because say for instance where we've already been very successful in lining up some of these hunger down venues now the venue is already cooperating so now you have the promoters helping to promote the fact that you can bring non-perishables and we do put some of the responsibility back on the club owners to you know advertise it, help collect it, and bring it to the food pantries. But you are bringing a new aspect to the table, whereas more active promotion of, of these collections. So love that. Yeah, because I think Ed's right. I haven't met a more generous group of people no, than it, the music scene in Rhode Island. If you need anything, if you want, not, not so much want, but if you are in true need of something, the Rhode Island music scene is it, second to none. They will go out of their way to make sure mm -hmm. you have what you need and you're taken care of. Yeah. Sometimes to their own detriment. Yeah, they, the, the proverbial yeah. starving artist, right? That's it. I hear that I mean, a lot. They, there's a reason why they're hungry, because <laughs> they, they will they're help giving. everyone to a fault. Yes, yeah, you're I mean, right on the money there. I mean, we did an event last, um, well, it was for my birthday, and uh, I wanted to tie it into a charity. And so we tied it into Mary's house in Providence. Okay, great. And I think we collected maybe 50, oh, well, maybe not as much as 50 pounds, but I know I had a ton of clothing that was collected mm -hmm. as well as a ton of uh, perishables and, and some food. Thank you for doing and, that. Um, and I know Mary's house was thrilled to death when we, we pulled in there with uh, my truck full of stuff. Awesome. And I, I don't know how much time we have, but I, I would like to plug some upcoming events. Oh, absolutely. Oh, please do. Yeah. You know, um, you want to wait till after another break? Or? No, no, go no, right ahead. Yeah. You know, just uh, some near-term things is like this Thursday night, barring the uh, weather, of course, down at the East Greenwich Hotel. 
uh, where those folks down there have just been amazing. Uh, my friends, Mark Greenwood, uh, Mark Odell, they're just like above and beyond the call of duty working with Joanne Joseph down there, mm -hmm. okay. who's a bass, bass player herself, yep. fellow 152 member, and they hold a lot of food drives there, and they actually just brought in a new one with a whole new group of people, uh, Deb Dante, I hope I have her name right, from Double D Promote Productions, and she's bringing in uh, Ray Cook and friends down there this Thursday at the East Greenwich Hotel, holding a big food drive. They always put a jar out for donations, you know, so another feather in our cap of um, and a, and more association with the East Greenwich Hotel, so totally love that. This Thursday, uh, my longtime 152 member, Glenn Duell, he's got a group, uh, you know, Glenn Duell and Friends, which in this roundup consists of Mark Cutler, Johnny Provo, and Johnny Juxo, and they're playing for the uh, to benefit the World Hunger Year down in Connecticut at... Um, in Niantic, Connecticut, a place called the Black Sheep. So that's this coming Thursday, if the weather cooperates. Um, these things are all on my Facebook page. Um, just search 152 on Facebook, you'll come right to it. And uh, why World Hunger Year is was founded by Harry Chapin originally, you know, another great oh, yeah. musician behind the cause of ending hunger. He started World Hunger Year. And to show you the, the beauty of the 152 concept is such an umbrella organization that his daughter, Jan, who runs World Hunger Year, is a fellow 152 member. So we're all pop with Jen Chapin now, you know, which is just tremendous. Uh, so there'll be m many more events coming down the pike long term with World Hunger Year and those folks. In April, Paula Claire is going to be pay playing at Java Madness, it's doing a food drive. In May, Sandy Woods uh, Festival, the Sandy Woods Folk Festival, is going to be uh, a food drive. That's uh, Russ Smith, who runs that organization over there, is. Uh, one of 52 member, he makes, he's gonna be a hunger down venue, collecting food, especially at this um, folk festival. That's uh, May 23rd, is that Labor Day weekend? Is that? Maybe the weekend before. I, always, I think I it's the weekend before. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, I always get those two mixed up. It's right around Memorial Day weekend. Uh, all summer long, uh, my buddy Chuck Smith, who he and I kind of started down the same path 25 years ago. He now goes by the name of Chakula. He's going to be doing events all through the New England area, all spring and summer this year. Uh, folk festival um, down in, uh, all around the folk festival down in Newport. Uh, Gary Hopp and friends, my buddy from East Greenwich, does an amazing job down at Finn's Harborside. He's got a bunch of gigs coming up this summer, and uh, he is a 152 member and has devoted some of this work to be part of the 152 Hunger Network. So exciting stuff, a lot of great events coming up. Some things that are happening coming in the near future is we're certainly expanding the 152 concept, uh, bringing in new members all over America. We talked a little bit about the Hunger Down with the Rhode Island Music Hall of Fame. That's uh, going to explode very soon. We've got the Rhode Island First and the Discover Rhode Island First uh, initiative that's a little bit more on the uh, side of business and helping to uh, improve the local economy. And then a very exciting thing we have coming up is the re-release of our CD that we produced um, this is going to be the 15th anniversary. It was called The Time Is Now, and it was a compilation of all uh, local music and some national music. Uh, you know, we did pretty well with that. We sold, you know, we sold out of our first thousand copies, but it wasn't gangbusters, so it nowhere near scratched the surface of its potential. So we're hoping that the 15th anniversary, now that we have, you know, of course, Al Gore invented the internet. We know much more about what's going on there. <laughs> we're going to do heavy-duty distribution through the internet of The Time Is Now re-release. For the 15th anniversary, so I'm very excited about that. That's great. Now, I got a uh, something just popped into my head. Maybe you, you've already thought about this, but have you ever thought of doing uh, networking with the different um, the different people in the 1052 network? Like bringing a group of them, or, or just doing an event where everyone or most of the people from the 1052 network gets together, bring a friend, bring whoever, just to have them networking. So, all right, maybe I don't know this guy, but he's doing something similar to what I'm doing, and maybe we can help each other out. Mm -hmm. You know, on our webpage, uh, 152.net, you know, the top, the roster, where it says, you know, all the roster of all the artists all across the country, the first words on there is, let the networking begin, you know? Yeah. So, first of all, we made the opportunity for people to share each other's links and visit each other's pages and see what else everybody else is doing. So, yeah, you're on the right track there. Well, I find that if... 
I'm in a room with someone, I'm more apt to talk to them. If I'm on Facebook or if I'm networking on the computer, you don't put as much stock into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ed. And what I'm thinking is, once we're come now that we got all these things hitting all at once, all this convergence of the uh, Rhode Island First Initiative, the re-release of the CD. Um, there's so many things coming together now that we definitely will hold at least one major networking event and get as many like thinkers as possible together. And then hopefully from there it'll be something maybe more ongoing, maybe every quarter. So, yeah, you're barking up the right tree there. Well, it, it's not my own idea. I have to thank our friend uh, Davey Moore for that. He does the midday social. Oh, okay, uh, he yep. tries to do that once a quarter. And I've just noticed from myself – how that little bit of networking one night mm-hmm. uh, out of every three months, the, uh, the, the contacts you make, the people that you, you get to talk to, and you don't even realize who you're talking to sometimes until afterwards. They, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm so-and-so. Sure. And, oh, my God, I've been listening to you for you know however long, but I've never been able to put a yeah. face with a name. I love it. Part of the um, what we do here with the 152 Hunger Network is – tap into a lot of existing infrastructure that's out there. Yes. Okay. You know, so for instance, this person, Davey, with his midday social, yep. yes. maybe he could make that a theme, have us in as a guest speaker, you know, or invite sure. one fifty two members in to congregate on that particular day or whatever. And you know, I can never facilitate all these things myself, so I do need to oh, kind de- of rely upon other delegating authority work. is yep. a dispersed responsibility is what I call it. <laughs> all right. Well I think uh, we're gonna take a break over here. Uh, we're going to leave out with Torn. name of the song is Broken. This is My Night Out Radio, Rhode Island Free Radio. We'll be back in a few. Of the day that 